This is the emblem of the U.S. Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron, better known as the Blue Angels. We're going to take you back to the 1980s and look at the team, a neat art assignment from the Douglas Aircraft Company, and a flight in the A-4 Skyhawk in this episode of Celebrating Aviation Art with Mike Machat. For those of you uh, familiar with the channel, you know that I began my career as a staff illustrator in the presentations department at McDonnell Douglas in Long Beach. This was my official company portrait. And yes, that's my real hair. I borrowed the glasses from Elton John. On the drawing board, you see an assignment where I'm painting a uh, brochure cover for the Blue Angels. We'll get into that in a moment. This is how I received the assignment. This is called a rough. It's just a basic concept and uh, has the initial uh, computations for budget and time. And we'll come back and look at this in a little more detail in a moment. Before we do, let's talk about the team and their history. Uh, the first show was flown in Jacksonville, Florida in the summer of 1946 using the Grumman F6F1 Hellcat. That was only for a few weeks. The team then upgraded uh, in August of that year to the Grumman F8F Bearcat that you see in this photo. In 1949 through 1954, the Grumman straight wing Panther was used, and then the swept wing F9F8 Cougar that you see here from 1955 to 1957. This was a beautiful airplane. It was subsonic and really suited the team. It was just like watching an aerial ballet. Really uh, just a great performance in the Cougar. But in 1957, they upgraded to my personal favorite airplane, the Grumman F-11 F-1 Tiger, which brought the team into the supersonic age. This was the first air show I ever saw of the Blue Angels at Coney Island, New York. And uh, it was inspiring to say the least. But the Tiger was a, just a terrific airplane and was used up through the 1968 season. In 1969, the team upgraded to the McDonnell Douglas F-4J Phantom II this was an amazing brute of an airplane, just a really powerful show, lots of noise, uh, it was just really impressive. And the Phantoms were used up until 1973. In 1974, the team moved to the McDonnell Douglas A4F Skyhawk II. And uh, yes, this is a real formation that's not Photoshopped. Um, I should mention that the A4F uh, was a special airplane. It was equipped with an 11,000 pound thrust Pratt & Whitney J-52 turbojet, uh, and it was stripped of all armament and tactical equipment, giving the lightweight aircraft a thrust to weight ratio of nearly one to one and a roll rate of 720 degrees per second. This is the 1981 team photo taken at El Centro, California, the winter training base. And 1981 was the 35th anniversary year of the team. So I had received this assignment and uh, you look at the upper right, there's a note there, Patch from Gann, and that referred to Harry Gann, who was a dear friend. He was the company historian, a world-class aviation photographer, and the team rep for the uh, Blue Angels to McDonnell Douglas. Harry took photos like this, the formation uh, diamond. Uh, this is uh, taken from the two-seat A4. Uh, this is called the Fortis. The solo pilots uh, are flying uh, with gear and hook extended, number five inverted. And again, this is a real photo. This is not Photoshop. Uh, this is an example of perfection. The timing on this, well, let's talk about it. This is called the slow, fast crossover. The diamond or four ship approaches from show right at low speed with landing gear and tail, tail hooks extended. While the two solo pilots just having finished their vertical rolls approach from left and right at 500 miles per hour perfectly timing the crossover at center point, which is marked by the yellow Navy fire engine seen at lower right. This is perfection. Speaking of which, how about the formation landing? You've got the solo pilots and the slot pilot touching down at the same exact second, followed by uh, ship two and three, and then the leader uh, in the front of the formation, all at the exact same airspeed uh, and then the same formation all the way till uh, rolling out at a stop at the end of the runway. Just spectacular. And of course, uh, you've got to mention Fat Albert Airlines, which is the turboprop Lockheed C-130 Hercules, which carries Blue Angels personnel and support equipment to the air shows, flying more than 150,000 miles per season. I should mention the more modern C-130J Super Hercules is in use today. 
Fat Albert is flown by a dedicated U.S. Marine Corps air crew assigned to the team. And then there's Blue Angels number seven. This is a two-seat TA-4J aircraft used for media rides and flown by the team's narrator. Now, this is where the story gets interesting, because before I did this assignment, Harry Gann came into my office and said, you can't paint the cover until you meet the team and get to know the guys and fly with the team in the A4, and then you'll be able to paint it. So this photo taken in uh, March of 1980 is entitled, It's a Dirty Job, But Somebody Has to Do It. My pilot was Lieutenant Randy Pogo Clark, an amazing airman and a dear friend. And this is a shot of Randy as a solo pilot a year later, but taking off in the uh, uh, A4 number five. And the trick of the solo pilots is that they would hit the gear up switch on the roll. And as the weight of the airplane came off the oleos, the gear would snap forward and the airplane would remain at the radar altitude height above the runway of 14 feet. Uh, building up speed until the end of the runway, at which point they'd uh, go into a series of maneuvers. On our flight, we uh, reached the end of the runway at 400 knots and went into a 6G pull. Now, if you're not used to 6Gs, you're going to black out. And I have an amazing photo of what it looks like when you black out in an airplane. It looks just like this. You come out of it at about 5,000 feet. And now you're rolling into a series of maneuvers. Why? Well, because we were inverted. But uh, Randy went through the show routine in the A4. Here we are coming down the backside of a loop. I remember seeing that barn just to the right of the center post of the canopy. And Randy said, Mike, you realize when we're actually doing the show, we're not up this high. Really. This is a Harry Gann shot uh, of us uh, making a low pass. That's me in the back seat taking a picture of Harry as I go by. And then here's our landing. He knows the gear on the A4 is pretty tall when it's uh, off the oleos and the gear is fully extended. Well, I uh, got through the flight. It was an amazing experience. I look a little pale there because most of my blood is still pooled in my lower extremities. That's another story. But uh, it was just a, a wonderful experience. And yes, I did gained a, a tremendous insight into how the team operates and the feeling of flight. The last step was to spend uh, an afternoon out at these training uh, center point out in the desert west of El Centro. And uh, folks, this photo was taken with a 50 millimeter lens. This is what it looked like as I was standing on the ground as the airplanes went over. This is uh, solo pilot number six. Pretty dramatic. So now I had the whole experience and again, met the guys, just a tremendous uh, group of folks and, and just, uh, you know, superlative uh, aviators in every sense of the word. Uh, I get questions sometimes in these photos. What is that uh, device on the leading edge of the left wing? And that is a, a cylindrical container uh, for the folding aluminum uh, ladder that is the uh, mounting ladder at air shows. So the, it's self-contained in the airplane. Well, here's that comp again. What we're going to do is show the first and last airplanes in the Blue Angels history. And at this time in 1980, it was the, uh, the Hellcat and the A4 Skyhawk in formation in front of the Blue Angels patch and with the 35th anniversary logo uh, down below. That would be the brochure cover. So let's see how it, uh, how it was made. Uh, this is the patch I got from Harry, the original patch. You notice that in the cloud at upper right uh, are the silhouettes of whatever airplane is operating uh, at that time. Now, with apologies to uh, any IPMS members or Max's uh, glue troopers out there watching this, uh, these models are an abomination. I apologize. But this is what happens when you're working under a tight deadline. Uh, you run down to the closest hobby shop. It was the military shop in the Lakewood Mall, about a mile north of the plant. And uh, you slap these things together and get them down to the photo lab on a job ticket. And you take the pictures of what is going to become your painting. So let's look at the elements. Uh, we have the uh, Hellcat. We have the patch, we put those two together and this is the beginning of the cover. You add the A4 Skyhawk and the calligraphy. Uh, this is the pattern, the uh, printing was actually done in gold foil, but this is a hand lettered uh, uh, calligraphy of the 35th anniversary year. And we had a calligrapher in the department who did all the flight certificates and fancy certificates. And so this was a beautiful job by him. 
And our cover with all these design elements put together looks like this. The uh, capstone to the story is that a number of the pilots who were in town for the air show at the El Toro uh, Marine Air Base uh, requested a flight in a sailplane. And so I took them up in my Blahnik and uh, it was an amazing experience. Some of the pilots had not flown gliders and uh, they, flew it, <laughs> they flew it as well, if not better than I did. But uh, it was a great experience to share. And I'd say probably a really good trade of uh, flights. In 1986, the A-4 Skyhawks were replaced by McDonnell Douglas F-A-18A Hornets. And in 2020, the Blue Angels upgraded to the new and larger Boeing F-A-18E Super Hornets. The team flies 60 shows per season and has been seen by more than 500 million people since the team formed in 1946. So there you have it, a look at the Blue Angels flying the A-4 Skyhawk, a flight in the airplane, and how artwork was created in a corporate art department. Thank you for celebrating aviation art with Mike Machat. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, we'd appreciate having you on board and please hit the like button. Thanks for watching and until next time, take care.